Hello and welcome to ASMR Whisper. Let me bore you to sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now, this, for those that don't know, is just a whisper softly spoken version of the Let Me Boy You To Sleep podcast that I do. And that's it really, just for those to like or prefer to listen to this type of video podcast than those that prefer the other one, the other one, I guess, it's just, you know, people, we all like, we all like different things, you know, someone, they, people used to say, oh, it, life would be boring if everyone liked the same thing, it probably wouldn't, would it, probably life would be peace, if everyone liked the same thing and had the same belief systems and yeah, would there be peace on the planet probably? <laughs> anyway. What I like to do first of all to say thank you for those of you that have subscribed either to my podcasts or to the YouTube channel, so thank you for that, I do appreciate that, for those that watch and those that listen regularly, so thanks, because without you, there'd be no point in me doing this, so ultimately, it's your fault, <laughs> it's your fault that I'm doing this. Blah, la, 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 la. So what I'm going to do is have a little look on line. I like, I like to, I don't know why, but on these podcasts, I kind of like to look on and online and see what, what news stories there are. I want to, I want to, I want to find positive, uplifting stories if possible. And the last two recordings I did for this, it was um, I did the BBC website news website, and then I did the Fox News website. So the so it's England and America. And it was a real struggle to find anything that was positive. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look for an Australian website. So news.com Australia. I'm going to go ABC. Australian Broadcasting Corporation. Of course, there's lots of websites, there's lots of news channels in each country, but I'm just trying to go to some, maybe, well, at least one. So, can I do one at a time anyway? So, let's have a look. So, nothing so far. They're talking about Putin, so that's not going to be positive. Nope. Aboriginal children, no, that's a negative. Nope, another negative one. Wow, Jerry Lee Lewis passed away. I didn't know that. Blimey. It was 87. So it's a thing about Nancy Pelosi. That's not positive. Has there, ever, has there ever, ever been a positive story about Nancy Pelosi? I 
not sure. This, I mean, for me, a weather, a weather story, provided it's not like extreme, is not necessarily a bad story. So it's, it's saying here, the parts of the country are about to see November snow for the first time in 14 years. So the first time since 2008. Um, but isn't this kind of springtime in Australia? Because the summer, isn't the summer the same time? Our winter here is summer in Australia, isn't it? I don't know. I think so. So, Antarctic winds to bring unseasonable snow for parts of South East Australia. So, I guess if you're used to really nice weather, then it's probably not a good thing. I don't know. Um, I, I'll be honest, I didn't think that Australia got snow. Uh, a lot, there are a lot of hot countries that just don't get snow. And I thought Australia being where it is, that it didn't get snow. I mean, that's just my limited intelligence, probably. You, maybe you can answer that question. Do you get do you get snow in Australia, or is it is it only certain parts of Australia that get snow? See, in this country, in my, I guess, I live in a tiny little country, but very varied weather. So, in Scotland and Wales, there's more rain than we get in the other parts of the British Isles. And I live in a place that gets the least rain. Apparently. But then if you go to places like... Uh, Cornwall, for example. They're very luscious. Very luscious places. Um, pine tree. Not pine tree. <laughs> not pineapple trees. But is it pine trees? But they've got beautiful beaches. and But there's a lot of... A lot of greenery. And generally, you know, you get that when there's a lot of rain. So, there are a lot of trees where I live. I mean, not in my, not in my home. But there's a huge tree outside. And I like that tree. If it ever fell over, it would take away all the buildings. It's that big. It was just a huge, huge tree. Hopefully the building on the other side of... I'm not saying I don't want any building to be knocked down, but I'd rather it not hit my building. If I had to choose. But I reckon that tree will be there long after everyone that's living around here is gone. It'll probably be here for hundreds of years, I imagine. Unless it gets dug up. And I like that tree because the amount of life that it provides, uh, that, that it, 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 loads of birds live there. Now they're pretty quiet at the moment. I don't mean like right this second. But they've been very quiet lately. I hardly hear them at all. And then, like during the summer, three o'clock in the morning, three thirty, four o'clock, they start, and it's really it can be quite it can be quite loud sometimes. But I love them. I love the birds. I do. I just I just love birds. Can't help it. I do. I think they're beautiful. Maybe not all birds, but you know, 
generally a, a fan of the um not kind of not gynecological what were they called Hort, not horticultural I can't remember the name of birds but you know fly flyy cultural whatever they're called anyway Australia's southeast is about to shiver through a near record late spring cold snap to start November. So it's late spring, so summer's coming up in what, December? End of November, December? Can you imagine summer in December? It just doesn't make sense. It does obviously if you live there, but for me it's like, wow. I mean, technically, if I had the resources to do it, I could live in Australia. Yeah, I could wait until the summer's over. So I'd live here between April and September and then move to go and live in Australia between September and March. So I could basically have two springs and two summers each year. Wow. I've never been so excited. Now temperatures through the week will drop as much as 15 degrees below average. Cold enough for rare November snow along parts of the Great Dividing Range. As far as north... As far north as central New South Wales. And as I said, last time was 2008 that this happened. It's also saying that following the state's wettest October on record. Now they don't say how long they've been recording it. They might have only been recording it for six months. Widespread storms could also trigger more flooding down the east coast. Now that's what I don't like, you know. I'm a big fan of weather, as long as no one gets hurt. That's kind of, that's where I cut it, I cut off, like, no. I don't want anyone to get hurt, I don't want people's properties to be damaged or anything like that. But I do like extreme weather, just... But then extreme weather here is not really that extreme. Like a really big thunderstorm, I love it. Or like a really, really, really windy day. Or like torrential rain. Provided I haven't got to go out in it. But then when I was in Thailand... It rained. I was there during the rainy season, which was a not great, pl not great planning on my part, and probably twenty percent of the time I was there, it flooded, like flooded. You couldn't. My well, people were walking in it, but it was up to their ankles, so it didn't. It didn't get like high, high, high. Like, you know, um, waist high or anything like that. But within a very short time, it was flooded. Like, within probably an hour of it raining, it would be flooded. And people were walking in it and it was covering their feet. And I remember one particular day. Why is it clicking? What's clicking? There was one particular day and I was at the beach and it became overcast. And this was, I don't know, four o'clock, maybe five, four, four o'clock, something like that. So it wasn't late. It wasn't early, but it wasn't late. And I was one, two, I'd say probably ten minutes from the hotel or the place I was staying so I decided I thought okay and it wasn't raining but I could see 
the reaction of the other people around me, the, the Thai people, they knew. They could sense that it was going to rain. They're very much like horses. And <laughs> cows who were lying down to make sure they had some dry ground after the rain finished. No, they weren't. But they were packing this stuff up. You know, people that were like uh, in the street selling stuff, they were packing up. So I thought, oh, okay. So I started walking back and it started raining. Before I'd even crossed the first road, it started raining. A little bit. And then a lot. Like really coming down to the point where it was as heavy rain as you're ever going to get. Absolutely soaked through before I even got to the main. This is a weird cracking sound. That's weird. I don't know what that's about. I don't know what that's about. It's a weird, like, kitty, 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 crickety. It might be... It might be the bottle of water, because I had some water, and sometimes... It crickles a bit. Crickles? You know, after being opened. But it didn't sound like the water. It sounded like it was coming from the recorder. Let me just put my headphones on. No, it's alright, it's working okay. How strange. That's very weird. That is weird. I wonder what could be causing that sound. I mean, I'm just sitting here and I can't. I don't, know, I don't know. Mind you, maybe the punch bag's about to fall off the off the wall. It does look like it's about to. I need to prepare for that to fill that hole in because I don't want a hole in the wall. Wow. Yeah, I do need to sort that out. I'm gonna get on that. Ooh. What was I talking about? I was talking about something. I don't know. Um, anyway, so we've got weather coming. Oh yeah, it was... I was walking past these bars on the way to the hotel. And literally, there was people in the bars, the staff saying... Hello, welcome. I was absolutely drenched. I mean, as drenched as you can get. You can't get any more drenched than that. And they thought I was going to step out of the... F At this point, my feet were nearly covered in water. And they thought I was going to step out of the rain and sit down, completely drenched, and have a drink. And have a jolly old time. When they don't have the kind of heat over there where your clothes dry. But here, on a really, really hot day, you can pour water over your head and over your t-shirt. And your t-shirt will dry on you within quite a short time. Over there, they just don't seem to have that kind of heat because it's so uh, I don't know what it is damp or you know it's very there's a lot of uh, water in the atmosphere. 
which is why it's such a luscious country, you know, with all the uh, vegetation and all that stuff. Anyway. I got back to the hotel and I did have a change of clothing and I had a change of shoes, which was lucky. And I hung up the clothes because I'd only been wearing them for an hour. I thought, well, I don't want to re I'm going to wash them. I literally, not, not my underpants, but um, I just turned them inside out. No, I didn't. So I hung up my shorts, which I was wearing, and my T-shirt. Three days it took for them to dry. Three days. The shoes never dried. They just, like, it, it, I stopped, I stopped checking, well, they probably did dry, but I stopped checking them after the fourth day. Absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> Really. Plus I had a chest infection, so I was just recovering from a chest infection and I get a soaking wet like that. I was like, oh man. This isn't good. That's what I thought. What was that noise? I'm just a bit very strange. What was causing that sound? It's bugging me now. So, yeah, so you might be getting some snow in Australia. That's it. That's the, that's the whole story. Okay, they're talking about... Why are they calling him Lord Musk? So they're being a bit negative towards him, but I just want to just have a look see what they're saying. So um, Elon Musk has apparently finalised his deal to take over Twitter. They're comparing him on here to Darth Vader. <laughs> wow. It's weird. They've, they've found pictures of him frowning and looking angry. Now, if you go on YouTube... And you watch his videos and interviews. He smiles and laughs a lot. Tells jokes. And. I don't know. I want to find at least one country in the world. That has a news website. I realise I've not looked at every website in England or America or um, Australia for news. But so far, majority is negative. There's hardly anything that I've found positive. And news doesn't have to be horrible. News is news. News is what is new. <laughs> What's happening? What's the latest thing that's happening? So all it is is what they're focusing on. There's some amazing things happening. Uh, scientific discoveries. No, I'm going to have to go to the scientific websites, probably, to find that stuff. Um, new cures on the horizon for different things. Uh, people that have recovered or people that have overcome things. Uh, uh, people that have raised money for charity. Uh, there's so many really happy stories well they could be I mean maybe you know I just find it I think I want to start putting stories that I find that are happy I want to start putting them on my website once my website is like back and up and running again that'll take about five years I reckon Okay, here's one that looks... Okay, ornamental pear trees. I've got no idea what ornamental pear trees are. Have beautiful white flowers. 
and the funkiest smell. Here's why. So let's click on that, see what it says. This is ABC Science by Dr. Naomi Kobelik. So this is what it said. You roll out on a on roll out of bed on a lovely spring morning, which is actually March April time. Don't forget that. Um, make yourself a cup of coffee and gaze out across the tree lined street, full of soft white blossoms. Well, right now, all the leaves have fallen off the trees. Here's a light breeze. Okay, just it's very very poetic. Just get on with this. What pungent aroma comes from their blossom? Oh, I don't really. That's why I got bored with that. Sorry. But it looked like a nice story. Okay. Tiwi Islander. I might mispronounce that. It might be Twi. But Tiwi Islander men have a proud association with the AFL. Now it's the women who want to step up. Apparently, okay, it says here, the Tiwi Islands is home to the most Australian rules players per capita. Yet only two Tiwi Islander women are playing professional. Oh, so there's going to be more women playing. That's good. Good for you. Um, snap. No. Nope. What do uh... Ah, this is an English story, but it's in, in the, it's there as well. Maybe it's all around the world. The first King Charles III coins have started being produced. I did see that online earlier. So the first coin bearing a portrait of King Charles is a memorial 50 pence piece honouring Queen Elizabeth II. What? It's a portrait of him. So it's a portrait of King Charles, but it's honouring Queen Elizabeth II, which, okay. So maybe she'll be, her picture will be on the other side. I'm not sure. I don't know. Oh, blimey, there's a story there, but I won't read it out, but it looks kind of... Hmm, okay. Red Bull, a grey... Nope. No, no, no. Blimey, come on, give me something nice to read. When I was in uh, when I was in Thailand, I was staying in a sports bar, and they had the Australian. I didn't know what the FL AFL stood for. What A R Australian Rules Football I A R F Australian Rules Football. Now I didn't know. I I was going to ask someone because about. Because, you know, I remember the late 80s, I think it was late 80s, Australian rules football started to be broadcast on television in England. Never seen it before. Didn't know what the heck was going on. Because it was almost like a, a mix between rugby and football. Like English football and English rugby. I say English rugby. Rugby is the same all around the world. Football, of course, called soccer, isn't it, in other other countries. But playing football, but then picking up the ball. It's like, that's handball. You can't touch the ball with your hand. But of course, Australian rules. And it was so physical. It became popular literally overnight. It became really popular. And they used to show it on a Sunday morning. 
and Australian rules football almost became cult viewing because no one had ever seen anything like it. Not in this country. I mean, I'm going to say no one. I'm sure plenty of people had been to Australia or had come from Australia that knew about it, but it never shown it here before. It's, it was new. At least it was new to me and the general public. And that was long before they ever showed the American, is it NFL? I mean, we don't, I mean, it's a little bit different, like, on some of the uh, internet channels, like satellite channels like Sky, I think they probably do show, yeah, they do show basketball games and stuff like that. Is that enough? You know, if they, like American football and basketball, maybe even baseball. But on terrestrial television in England, we never used to have that stuff. I don't think I've ever seen basketball and I've never seen baseball on terrestrial television in this country. They have it on um, satellite and sky and uh, we used to have a thing called BS, BSB, which was another thing. And there was another Centeno or Centeno or something, which was a, another like sports satellite thing. Senten, Sententa. Something like that. So I've never seen anything like Australian rules football. I'd seen clips of American football. Uh, a lot of it was from movies and TV shows and stuff. And like clips of... Because even though the um, American football has never really been... It was never popular in this country because it was never shown on terrestrial television. It's more popular now because it is on Sky and it's, you know, so millions of people, anyone has access to it now that wants to watch it. They just have to pay, pay to watch it. They have to pay to, you know, for the sports channels or whatever. But even back in the 80s, they used to give the results of the Super Bowl. The Buffalo Broncos wins and whatever. And they'd perhaps talk about the um, the singer who was like Whitney Houston or Mariah Carey or Madonna or whoever, you know, through the years has been uh, singing on stage in the half time. Yeah, they didn't show the actual thing. Like now, Channel 4 on Terrestrial TV, I think they show the Super Bowl. Oh, there's a cat outside now. I can't believe I'm being interrupted by a pussy. It's the first time that's happened. Blimey. But yeah, it's... Uh, it's just stopped. I think uh, the thing I struggled a little bit with American football is, I think it's because I don't understand it. That's what it is, I'll be honest. I don't understand um, really what's going on. Generally in life, I'm a little bit like, what's going on? What, what's this camera f facing me for? What's, what's this thing in my mouth? So I get a little bit confused sometimes, but I don't, I don't understand the process and the rules of American football. So that's why I don't try and judge it or anything. Um, but from an outsider without any knowledge, and I could learn it, you know, I could just probably just go online and learn it. But because it's, it's not on very often, I don't, you know. So I, it's, I don't watch the sports channels, really. The satellite ones. But it's that stopping and starting, continuously stopping. And we don't have that. We do have it in football. Um, if there's a penalty or if there's a foul or 
if they want to, you know, swap over a, a player or if there's a goal kick and stuff. So it, it's not like football is going the whole time, but it does get stopped, but not as often. Or if there's a corner or a free kick, you know, it's, there's it does get stopped. So it's not like it doesn't go for the full 45 minutes, half without any stoppages. But with American football, it just seems to stop continuously, like continuously stop. And I don't really understand why. It's because I don't understand the rules. So um, no judgment here. I just, I couldn't really get my interest around it. But then I'm not being brought up with it. And I'm not particularly interested in football either. So the one thing I will, what I will say is American football looks exciting. That's the thing. It looks exciting. With all the equipment they're wearing, um, dressed up like, I don't know, baddies from a Star Wars movie, you know. It's, it's, it's just, it's colourful. It's a big event, like every game is like a big event. And cheerleaders and mascots running around dressed as penguins and stuff, like. And the crowds seem to be nice and the crowds are mixed. So you've got women and children. And it's not like sometimes football here just seems like it's just a bunch of really angry men. I know it's not, but sometimes, you know, it's the way that some of the football fans have acted over the years. It's like, why would you ever take a child to that environment unless you wanted to grow up aggressive? I'm sure it's not always like that. I've been to one football match, so what do I know? But when I watch it on telly, they just don't look... They look angry. They don't look like they're having fun. Maybe it's just me. Um, but the American football fans seem to... It's like a family occasion. It's like a really happy, joyous event. And I don't... I've never found watching English football to be that. Not even the big games, you know, like FA Cup or even World Cup. It's exciting for everyone, really, I guess, because it's, it's pumped up and it's promoted. And it's, especially if England are playing Germany, it's such a, a history there. I don't, I'm not talking, I'm not talking about, um, you know, that late, you know, 1940, early 40s and stuff. I'm just talking about, like, football. The light just went weird on my camera. So if I go like that, it changes the focus, I think. If I go like that, oh. Never mind. So, oh, light's changed again. I... Baseball, I've literally only really seen on movies or in movies. And we had a thing here called Rounders, which was, it's kind of something that children play, which is exactly the same as baseball, exactly the same, as far as I know. You know, someone chucks a ball at the person, they've got a bat, and the bat's the same as a baseball bat. I think sometimes with kids, the bat, the bat's a little bit smaller. Um, sometimes it's rounders, sometimes it's softball. They use a, a hardball or a softball. You know, it depends, I guess, on the age of the kids. And they hit it. And you've got people standing around at the various parts of the circle. To catch the ball, if it, and then people on the outside looking to catch the ball, it's 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 just a version of cricket, isn't it really? And then you run round to see how far, how many laps you can get, and you get points for that. So if you hit the ball into um, Smelly Nelly's uh, back garden, and you have to climb over the wall to get it and stuff. 
you might be able to run around four times. So obviously with cricket, you just, you do runs and you run back and forward. What excitement. And, but if someone catches the ball, you're out. But you might have already got to the first stop, so you're fine. But if they catch it before you get to the first stop on the circle, because usually there's like little things sticking up around, then you're out. Or if you're halfway between one stick and another stick on the circle and the person picks the ball up from the ground and chucks it to the person who's standing in the stick and they touch the stick with the ball, then you're out. Ex exciting stuff. It probably is for kids. I think with baseball, though, it's, it's more... I mean, they're chucking those balls at like a million miles an hour and hitting them so hard and so far that, um, I mean, I... It's a real skill to be able to hit a baseball. It's a real skill. Because it looks easy. It's really not. It's easy if someone's doing an overhand throw. And they're throwing very lightly. And the person's like 10 years old. And the only thing you've got to worry about a kid throwing. Is that they throw it in the right direction. And you can hit it most times. Because it's, it's, it's being thrown slowly at you. I'm... <laughs> I remember being told, you know, you've got to throw it towards the batter. I said, well, why? If you don't want them to hit, isn't that the point is you don't want them to hit the hit the ball with a bat? Yeah. Well, chuck it in a different direction then. I'll chuck it behind me. I can't hit it then. No, that is not the rules. No. This makes sense to me. So... I I liked softball, well, rounders, I liked it, it was fun, especially on a nice summer's day, at school, being outside, no one else, you know, just, my, my memory is in junior school, probably about 19, 1979, 1979-1980, time and it was nice I liked it didn't like football never liked football didn't like playing it the only thing I did like about football is the goals I liked to kick towards the goal that was fun because it was kind of easy unless you know it's, it's to get because the goal is so big and especially if you've got kids they're so little compared to the goal. So it's... I know sometimes they do have smaller goals when it's five a side. I say easy. I mean, for others, not for me. <laughs> but it was... It was... It was more fun. I'll tell you what I did like. In that same school, we used to have this big wall. And I remember I used to think I had superpowers and I could walk through it. I constantly had a black eye. Um, and a sore nose. So I used to go there on a Saturday when the place was closed and I used to kick the with a football and I'd kick it against the wall and it'd come back and I'd kick it again. And that used to be something I used to really enjoy doing. Sometimes I'd stay behind after school and do it because I enjoyed it. I... I just found that football was much more fun if there's no one else involved. So football to me is very much like <laughs> love making. Um, tennis, oh, tennis, I don't. Um, 
No. I was either really, really not very good. Or way better than the person I was playing. And I was only better than one person. That was my friend. And he was like me. Really, when it came to sport. You know, with football. What me and him used to do. During football. We'd always get picked last. Just, it was a, it was a, I mean, people with wheelchairs would get picked before me. So I'm not even joking. Seriously, I was picked last. Always. Me or him. And, oh, it's getting hot with all these lights. No, no sweat yet. Yep, that's, that's all. Um, I, what we used to do, we used to do, we didn't even stay on the pitch. We would stand at the side near the goal, our own goal, and spin around until we got dizzy and then stop and then just wobble over and fall on the floor and laugh. That's what we did during football. To be fair, we might have been substitutes. We might not have actually supposed to have been on the pitch. I don't know. I'm making a lot of this up, so I can't remember. Now, cricket, in junior school, I had all that, well, because of my reputation for chucking balls, they wouldn't let me bowl, but they would let me bat. So they put me in bat and I had the, I had one leg um, coverer, you know, like a protector. One of my knees was protected. For some reason, I don't know why they didn't have both. But one leg was protected. And the idea is you had the other leg behind. Well, somehow the person chucking a ball managed to hit my other leg with the ball. And I lost it. I lost my temperament. <sighs> Because it was well, but hang on, so it was it was really painful, and I wanted to. I was I chased I chased that kid with a bat. I was like, "Why would you do that? If you not see, I've got this big bit of wood in my in my hands." So I chased them. I got in trouble for that. But what do you expect? You can't do that. I know it probably wasn't his fault. It probably didn't mean to do it, but too late. Oh, I hurt. And I said, I ain't never doing this again. Now, you're not supposed to kind of get away with refusing to participate in sports when you're a kid. But after the after kind of the, the rigmarole or the fuss that I made, the teacher's like, okay. You can sit out next time. And I did. So I used to spin around until I got dizzy. I fell over. That's kind of where that started, I think. And then in high school, I was introduced to, um, what's it called? Hockey. Now, I was looking forward to playing hockey because my stepmom used to play hockey. And she said it was a lot of fun. And I thought, okay, cool. I'm up for that. Well, there was loads of sticks. Everyone had sticks. Like with cricket, only one person's got the bat, you know. Uh, tennis, well, tennis, everyone has, but you know, uh, the bats and stuff. But I like the idea that everyone was equal. Everyone had a bat or a stick. Well, someone hit me in the leg with a stick and that was it. I chased them. I was banned from playing hockey. You don't hit me with a stick and expect to get away with it. I'm going to chase you. Just, you know, it's no different now <laughs> than what I was. They hurt me, hit me right in the shin. Now, I'm pretty sure we should have had protection. I don't mean... Um, condoms I'm talking about like on my 
they wouldn't have they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have protected my shins, would they? Give me something to chew on. That was really oh, that was because you oh, it hurts the shins hurt, but yeah, I'm not sure if I if or how many times I managed to hit him, but yeah, I wasn't wasn't allowed back, I wasn't allowed to touch a hockey stick again. So I was getting to a point where I was running out of sports because those I was either really not very good or just couldn't be bothered or a bit inappropriate with the <laughs> with the bats or the sticks. Yeah. I just yeah, I just those don't hit me with a stick and expect to walk away. It's not, I'm always, I'm only 11, but still, I just, no, no, I ain't going to happen. And I was the same when I was nine, like hit me in the, hit me in the knee with a cricket ball and expect to get away with that. No, 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 no. So yeah, perhaps maybe I wasn't a very, maybe I wasn't very sporting. <laughs> maybe and but a lot of like rugby I couldn't play rugby I was too small it was ridiculous I remember the um, I got on the rugby pitch so we were we were, all, we were all getting ready we used to have this field that we used to go to there was I don't know why we had a perfectly good field behind the school but for some reason went to this other field. And I saw the first time when people start jumping on each other. Like they get the ball, they jump, they, they like skid and hit the line. And about eight other boys jumped on top of them. Like I knew straight away that that was not going to happen to me. That was not going to happen. Apart from the fact that Everybody was bigger than me. I was tiny. Everybody was bigger, pretty much. I mean, there was there was kids that were actually physically adults by the time, you know, we hit first year, like 11 or 12. Some of them were as big as a, an 18, 19-year-old. I'm not even joking. You know, it just some of them just really were big early. And some of them were big, but they weren't adults, they were just bigger kids. And a lot of the kids were, well, everyone was older than me. I was the youngest in the year. So my birthday was just before I went back to school. And some people were having their next birthday the first week of school. So my birthday, end of August, and then they were having their birthdays in September, beginning of September. So we're nearly they're a year older than me. And that's a lot when you're a teenager. So rugby was out. I was very firm about that because I was not going to allow people to jump on me. That was not going to happen. Not big people, kids. Some of the kids are twice my size. It's okay if if we got a stick or, you know, it's a more of an equal situation, but ugh. No. Luckily, I had my hockey stick <laughs> tucked in my pants. <laughs> God, can imagine if my parents found out about this? Like at the time, I mean. The teachers, all they said in my first, my very first um, parents' evening, my parents came home and said. They said, what's going on? I said, no, not much. What's a bit of telly? I said, they said, not, not what would be now. I mean, what's what's going on at school? I said, not much, just classes and stuff, kids, teachers. I said, like, I, I think I was taken a little bit too literally. I said, I don't know. She said, have you seen your, do you, do you know what the teachers told, said to us about you? I said, how should I know? You, you're the ones that have been there talking to the teachers. I've been at home watching Doctor Who. How would I know what the teachers said to you? 
I've not bugged you, you know, I've not got a little, um, I've not been surveilling you. I, how would I know what the, t- I didn't say any of that stuff because my dad would have, um, hmm, reacted. Hmm. So I said, oh, hmm. they said, the teachers told us they have to physically remove you from other, te- from other pupils because you keep attacking them. It's <laughs> like, so, I was a little bit over the over the top. It was a little bit exaggerated, I think. And they said, they said you chuck you you chuck desks at other pupils. Like, well, yeah, they're bigger than me. I have to, you know you have to use what's there, you know. Um, and they said, why do you do that? I said, well, like in for, if you get into high school, there's almost like a there's a period of feeling each other out and you gotta you gotta make your mark and I had to make a mark that I wasn't going to be messed with <laughs> I guess and pe- maybe people were trying to mess with me I mean some people like try and make fun of my dad didn't even know my dad but they'd say horrible things about him and I would stop them from saying horrible things Again, I was like 11 years old. I was a little kid. I was a tiny little kid. You could hold me in your hands. I was absolutely tiny. Um, but I used to chuck, you know, those desks that you sit at with the lids. I used to get them and I don't know how I lifted them up, actually, but I used to chuck it at people. It's not a good thing. You know, so obviously it's not a good thing to do, but it seemed a, it seemed a good idea at the time. <laughs> Not a good excuse, but you know, I laugh now. But you know, I did stop doing it once I was told that it wasn't recommended. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop. And um, <laughs> it's not really funny, is it? But you know. I just got this image of this tiny little me with these kids much bigger giving it the big one like really thinking that they could uh, wind me up you know and then <laughs> like saying something oh your dad is this then looking at his friend to laugh and then suddenly seeing this big desk hurling towards him so yeah yeah, I got into a bit of trouble. I think the teachers didn't give me such a hard time because I was so little. It's like I wasn't a big, strong bully type, you know? So I, they could, I don't think they could quite understand it. And also I was nice. I wasn't a horrible kid. I just, if someone tried to pick on me or someone said something horrible, I would react. And part of that is because I grew up with, well, I grew up in a very, um, rough environment when I was little. Plus I had two older brothers. So there was that rough and tumble, not going to be scared of other kids. If you've got like a four year old brother that's four years older than you, one that's two years older than you, both twice as big. And you don't back down against them. So why am I going to back down against kids my own age? So, and then, and then, because I was what would be classed as special needs now, didn't have special needs back then. You had morons and dunces. That's what you used to call them. Dunces and morons. And they'd put you in a different class. And I was kind of, I was moved, part of my lessons were moved into this classroom where we just didn't have any teaching at all. We were just left alone to play games and just to hang out. So I was moved for a couple of my lessons there. So, you know, it would have been now in today's like today, it would have been, I probably would have had a, a teaching assistant special needs that would be there to help me to support me 
to sort of say what's going on Jason and to try and explain stuff in a way that I could maybe understand instead of one teacher at the front of the class with I don't know maybe 30 students and it's got to be a hard job I didn't care at the time I didn't care about teachers and part of my my role in life was to an to annoy the teachers and wind them up um which isn't a good thing but it's it's what I enjoyed doing but then by the time I got to like third year or even second year I just got ignored the teachers just ignored me and let me just sit there because I didn't attempt to interact didn't attempt to do anything they wouldn't call me up and say oh Jason anything like that they just you know I'd sit there the last two years of high school I'd just take magazines to read I wouldn't do anything I'd just sit there reading magazines I wouldn't do any coursework there was a couple of teachers who were strict and they'd have to pretend they but I pretended I was working and so did they they knew I wasn't you know I'd sort of have me exercise book open and I'd be reading boxing monthly or KO or the ring magazine or I'd be reading bodybuilder magazines or martial arts magazines things like that or chatting to someone I mean, nowadays, I probably would have just been on my phone. That's kind of probably how I would have rolled. So, it was weird. Kind of a weird, a weird uh, education. Because before that, in junior school, like before the ages of 11, between the ages of 9 and 11, was my happiest time at school. Actually, not necessarily, like... From 8 to 11, yeah, or 8 to 10, I was quite happy. I went to three different schools, so I went from 7 to 10, <laughs> three different schools. The last two years I was at one school, and apart from one incident when I got the slipper from the headmaster, for no reason, I set fire to his wig, that's it. That's so just wait until he took it off. But no, I didn't. All I was doing was just one. I was waiting for a wonder. I was going to a toilet and I think on the way back from the toilet, I just, I got distracted. And I was just daydreaming and wandering around. And he must have been having a bad day because he grabbed me and pulled me into his room and gave me his, his a slipper. But, I, but when I say give it, he didn't like present me a slipper. There you go. There's a slipper. That's for your right foot. If you're a good boy, you get the left foot one in a month. Like It wasn't like that. You know, it's like, um, they, they don't do that anymore. Don't, don't do the slipper anymore. But other than that, I have very fond memories of that school, apart from sports. Uh, well, I didn't like football, but there was no pressure to play football there. Uh, I didn't, I liked rounders, I f it was fun, I did, I, I make fun of rounders, but, and you know, if baseball, whatever, being rounders, but it's fun, I don't find stuff like that fun to watch though, I just generally don't, I don't find football particularly interesting to watch, um, I don't, the only sport that I enjoy watching is boxing, now, I used to love doing karate and martial arts, kung fu, karate. Watching it, not so much. Interesting from a, a stylistic perspective and seeing how people do things. and um, Like now, but when I was a kid, I used to love martial arts movies. I went for a period and all I did, like, not all I did, but I would watch every single kung fu movie available like I must have watched hundreds upon hundreds There's, I reckon I watch at least 90% of all martial arts movies ever made seriously I've really really went to town with it 
if I actually had every martial arts movie that I've watched, this wall, these walls would be completely covered. If I had shelves of them, seriously. I had a friend once that had that. He lived in this studio apartment. It's a studio flat. For some reason he had two beds in his living room. Which was handy because I lived with him for a little while. So I, that was good for me. But he also had a settee and a TV. And there's a, had his own bathroom and a kitchen. I liked the place that, you know, I went into a couple of those flats. Um, in fact, I knew three people that lived in those flats, three different, no, four different people, three or four. And he had on every wall in his living room, well, living room, bedroom, was one room. He had shelves on every wall and they were all filled with video cassette tapes. Like, you know, in cases. He had probably thousands of movies. That was his hobby. That He loved movies, like loved movies. Now, I haven't seen him since the 80s. I might have seen him in 1990. That's probably the last time I saw him. So, of course, it's 30 odd years ago. And... I don't know what he's doing now. He was also obsessed, but well, I say obsessed, I mean in a good way. He loved snooker. Like, loved playing it, loved watching it. Now that I can understand. I can understand watching something that you love doing. Even though I don't necessarily... Well, no, I used to love... I, will, I probably would have enjoyed watching karate and tournaments but there wasn't anything to watch there was no internet or anything back then when I was doing karate I would probably would have enjoyed watching it and I did go to a few to tournaments as well and participated in a couple but yeah I can see why someone would like to do both watching and doing like I've got a friend who loves fishing that's his passion but he loves watching people fish on television which is from a non-fishing perspective and I'm, I'm a non-fisherman person I I don't see really what the attraction is of either doing it or watching it but he loves it and you know what I'm all for people doing what they love if you enjoy watching whether it's soaps on telly or Doctor Who, or if you want, if you can, if you like, really love uh, train spotting or uh, watching planes taking off, or you, you collect postage stamps, what does it matter if you're happy? They're good for you. If you're doing something that gives you pleasure and joy, good for you. So if it's watching boxing, if it's watching football, rounders, uh, baseball, uh, American, uh, you know, whatever, basketball. Apart from F1, come on, stop, no, no, including F1. I don't get it. I don't understand why people watch a car going round and round. I don't watch your cars. I don't, because it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't drive, never driven, never owned a car. I have no interest in it. But if I did, I'd probably love it. Like my brother loves it. And I have to learn to not be negative towards what he loves. He loves F1. Like, it's his passion. To him, watching F1 is like me watching like a world heavyweight championship boxing. You know? He loves it. And... In my younger days, I was like, oh, what are you watching that for? I'd be like negative. But now, as I've got older, I've sort of, I can still, I can still make fun of it, but in a, in a gentle way, you know, just like, so what? If you're happy, that's the bottom line. 
if you're doing something that you're loving doing and it's fun for you and you're happy and you look forward to doing it, how good for you. That's all I've got to say is good for you. I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, as long as it's not hurting anyone else, and ideally, you know, it's not hurting you, then good for you. Have fun. Enjoy it. But I love watching boxing, and I'm going to continue watching boxing for as long as I can. I know lots of people don't like it. I do. Love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> love. But it's the only sport I love. Yeah, it's weird. I wish I did. I wish I was more into more sports. I just You can't force yourself. You know, I do watch World Cup, you know, the World Cup. And I, I even watch some of the Olympics. But then I find myself, other than the 200 metres, no, 100 metres final, generally, the men's final. I don't know why, but just for some reason, I just, it's quite exciting. Boxing is the only thing I really watch on the Olympics. So, yeah. Anyways, that's, that's enough for me. Thank you for listening. Take care and bye.